call this meeting to order. Mike, would you lead us in the pledge, please? Thank you, Ann. Would you call the roll, please? Uh, Mr. Reiner. Here. Mayor Lechleiter. Here. Mrs. Boring. Here. Vice Mayor Saley. Here. Mr. Gerber. Here. Mr. Missy Zarker. Here. And Mr. Keenan. Thank you. We don't have any proclamations or special presentations this evening, so we'll move right to citizens' comments uh, regarding uh, uh, any uh, comments that individuals would like to make regarding matters not on this evening's agenda. Uh, first up, we have uh, Mr. Maurer. Your Honor, or as we say in another country, not far from here, Your Worship, though we do say it with a great deal of irony, Concealed irony. When it was up here the last time, I said I had a laundry list of issues. And I didn't finish that list, so I'm bringing another one in tonight. And I need to have memory uh, restored here on this. Am I right in recalling, I think sometime within the last three to five months, uh, you passed legislation and some bed tax money to host um, university and college football coaches. Am I right in recalling that? Marcia, if you could help out. There's an event coming up. I don't know what yeah, our the, contribution uh, that is. the Pop Gun uh, football camp that will be held at Jerome High School. Oh, it's not hasn't happened yet? No, it's in uh, mid-July. July. July. Mm -hmm. OK. Like I want to, my lifestyle and my morals and my brain power, such as it is, I want to register an absolute objection to the hosting of that conference of the football coaches. And the reason is that football should be abolished from colleges and university. Abolished. Uh, it has nothing to do with colleges or universities, which from their name, college, a collection, and university, the universe, devote themselves to studying our home, which is the universe, and everything we've done in this home, and what we think we're doing and why we should do it. And football has absolutely nothing to do with that. And as a matter of fact, it's a cultural problem, too give our children unrealistic, unrealistic expectations of making the football team. Now, how serious am I about that? Uh, you remember last November, either the first or the second weekend, the Ohio State University football team played its last game of the season, probably against Michigan, and it won it. As a matter of fact, had a perfect season. Simultaneously, when that was happening, I wrote and put finishing touches on an argument calling, called, not surprisingly, football should be abolished from the university, and uh, delivered it to a sector of the university. <clears throat> I don't want to mislead you. I, there have been no great powerful surges moving in that direction yet, but it's a mustard seed, and it might, um, who knows, what might happen to it. So I registered tonight. When is this going to happen, this uh, hosting? I, I thought I saw something in July 18th. It's mid-July. Oh. Well, I register my 114% objection to it, and I object to the money you put into it, and I object to the act itself. Um, now I have, I don't know to what extent you're interested in this, 
I could furnish you with hard copy of my argument, or I could, and maybe I'll do this, I'll bring it along next time and read it, and I see my time is up. Thank you. Mr. Mauer, um, <clears throat> just a couple of responses. The first one being, um, you know, unless other council members think differently, you know, whatever commitment we've made to this particular event has been made. Oh, sure, I know that. Oh, I know, you can't, can't undo it. Can't, we can't renege on that. And, and again, I don't remember the exact dollar amount, um, but I'm sure staff could get that to you if you need that information. And, and beyond that, uh, I appreciate your point of view. It's a beauty of free speech. I would imagine that there are a variety of views uh, regarding you know the issue you just spoke to. And uh, Yeah, I've taken care of that variety. Right, great. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate Thanks it. a lot. Thanks. American. Uh, uh, next up is Mike Bickley. If you would uh, state your name and address for the record, please. Mike Bickley, 5839 Moray Court, Dublin. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, Council, thank you for the opportunity to continue the dialogue on the fence, the Mirrorfield fence. Um, last time I was here, we talked about the Dublin fence code. And uh, I think we all know the Dublin Fence Code says this fence can't go into Muirfield. Today I want to talk about the community, the people involved. Uh, Muirfield's a unique and special community. It really is a special place. 2,400 homes, um, probably 20% of Dublin's population, something around 8,000 people. Uh, we all chose to live there, to live, live there. We chose for a lot of different reasons, but one of the reasons is the open space, the vistas, the views, the bike trails. The overall environment in Muirfield is, is unique. And, uh, want to protect that. Um, I think it's been a fantastic thing that the Muirfield Golf Course has been part of the community. And as you drive through the community, as you walk on the bike pass, it seems like it's part of the community. And uh, any sort of fence, particularly this fence, we think will change that ambiance and change that idea. Um, I've lived a bunch of places, and this is unique. I was born in London, England, and um, spent 25 years in Toronto. And in Canada, when you buy a house, the first thing you do is put up a fence from property line to property line, wall to wall, and that's just the way you do it. And when I came to Dublin, I found this is a really unique place, and Muirfield specifically, the open space, the green spaces, the landscaping, the way the community flows together, the way that we're all, we have $200,000 condos and $3 million estates, but we're all a community, and um, fences change that. Fences will change that. Um, the community is engaged, it has been since the start, um, we have a petition here which directed the city council with 711 people signed, as well as a, a 108 people made specific comments, written comments. I'll give Anne a copy of this. Perhaps she can distribute it to you. The comments, they are interesting comments. They're well thought out comments. The people that signed this and, and commented are some of the community leaders, business leaders, engaged people. I think it would be something that at some point would be interesting. Um, Today, it's sort of a grassroots movement. Um, we have 800 people on our email list who are actively involved. And what the astounding thing is we have between three and 3,500 people each week on our Facebook page. This is my first time ever using Facebook, so I'm astounded that 3,500 people look at the, uh, some of the silly stuff I put on our Facebook page, but it's, it's quite amazing. Um, so from here on out, really, there's only two ways we can go. Either we can work something out as a community or we end up in court together, and we don't really want to do that. Um, we've got a couple of attorneys assisting us, um, but I sent Marcia a note a week or so ago. I still think there's room for the parties to sit down together, um, honest people, good minds, and work out something that the community can live with. And um, I think a, a backroom deal with the City of Dublin and Muirfield Village Golf Club would not be the way to do that. So I would just ask you to consider that in a positive way and um, see if there's a chance to get together and talk about it. That's it. Thank you. Yeah, Mr. Bickley, um, just a couple of responses, yeah. and, and I guess the first one is, you know, there's no shortage of attorneys in Dublin. There's lots um, of And a couple of us here on council. Yeah. But um, uh, there's no backroom deal going okay. on here, okay? So I, I just, again, I'm just, speaking for myself. I okay. have no idea what's going on. I'm just, okay. I'm, I'm just bringing it up as a okay. potential that we would Appreciate not it. feel is appropriate. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks for your time. Okay, moving on to our consent agenda. 
uh, would ask any council member if they would like to remove any one or more of the eight items listed on the evening's consent agenda. <clears throat> Hearing none, I would move that we approve the actions requested for the eight items listed on this evening's consent agenda. If there's a second. 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 Thank you. And if you call for the vote, please. Uh, Mrs. Boring? Yes. Vice Mayor Saleh? Yes. Mr. Reiner? Yes. Mr. Keenan? Yes. Mr. Nisi Zerker? Yes. Mr. Gerber? Yes. Mayor Lechleiter? Yes. Good. Thank you. Moving on to the second reading of ordinances and beginning with Ordinance 50-13. You're zoning approximately 12.05 acres located on the east side of existing Drake Road right-of-way to be vacated, approximately 200 feet south of the intersection with Springburn Drive from our rural district to PUD, Land Unit Development District. This is Stansbury at Muirfield Village, PUD, to establish an 18-lot single-family detached residential development, approximately 4.5 acres of open space. Thank you. I have to uh, recuse myself on this because I am a voting member of the Muirfield Board, so I've been instructed by the city attorney that uh, cannot participate in this discussion. Thank you. Thank you, John. And hey, Mr. Goodman, whenever you're ready. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening. We appear to be having some technical difficulties uh, right now. We'll try to get a presentation ready for you if you like. Um, uh, this case, this rezoning case, was introduced to City Council at the June 10th meeting. I understand that there were no comments or questions at that time. And in case you're wondering, Claudia's away at a, a conference this week, so I'm filling in for her this evening. Um, but if we can get the, it, it looks like we'll be able to get the presentation working here. If you would like to receive the presentation again, I'd be happy to do that, or simply to answer any questions uh, that you may have. What is Council's pleasure? You want to see the presentation again? I assume there hasn't been any changes since the there, there have been no changes since the first reading. I think we're good then. That's what we're hearing. I'm hearing. Okay. Thank you. Um, Mr. Goodwin, was there anything, any other comment that you'd like to make regarding the project? Uh, simply, I know that the, uh, the applicants here this evening, and, and I believe that there are some nearby residents uh, in this area here who may wish to speak on this case. Okay. Mr. Hale, um, is, don't feel compelled to make comments. No, 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 I'm not stopping. No, I don't mean it that way. I really don't mean it that way. Um, uh, uh, and, and perhaps, I mean, you're certainly welcome to make comments, or you may wish to uh, listen to those individuals. We have at least three individuals who have signed up. Uh, it, I'll leave it yeah, up I just you. have a couple of th <clears throat> things that I'd like to say. I, I think whether the neighbors, I think they know this, but I wanted to, uh, there have been some activity um, since the Planning Commission hearing um, since the Planning Commission, we've continued to work with staff on on a, on a few issues which I think have been resolved. Uh, we've also continued to work with <clears throat> the Muirfield, <clears throat> excuse me, the Muirfield Association, and we have reached an agreement with the Muirfield Association that the association will own the uh, open space that's being created in this development and and uh, take care of that open space. Uh, we will also be subject to all of the Muirfield restrictions, including uh, review of um, the uh, 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 building plans for all the houses. So they'll be subject to Muirfield restrictions, reviewed by Muirfield uh, before we'll be able to uh, build these houses. So <clears throat> I don't know how I don't know what else we could do to better integrate th this uh, development uh, in, into Muirfield. It's truly going to be a part of Muirfield. Uh, you know, when I was here working for Mr. Uh, Nicholas uh, back in 73, and this was a, uh, was a holdout, you know, he didn't have the right of eminent domain, but at the time we tried to buy it and the gentleman wanted to live there and didn't want to be annexed. so. We left him out, and um, uh, so I, I don't. I don't know how we uh, better integrate th this. The other, only other thing that I want to say is that um, one of the uh, conditions of uh, planning commission, which was condition five, is that the applicant verify the building envelopes to ensure all landmark trees are preserved. Uh, we have found. Um, as we adjusted those borders, there's one cottonwood. We were able to adjust the lots and get that cottonwood on on a lot line, and we believe we can save that tree. 
Um, there's another tree on a lot, which frankly we can't do anything about. It's it's in the middle of the lot, <laughs> so that tree uh, is 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 going to uh, is not going to make it. We had one other tree that was uh, in, uh, on the edge of a right of way, uh, and, and and that tree. Uh, is also questionable. All the other trees, we're, we're preserving the great majority of trees, and actually, along the borders, we're going to replant uh, to uh, in areas where there's not woods to create woods. But that, um, in in terms of that that uh, one landmark tree uh, on that on the lot, I don't. Do you know? Do you know the lot number? I do not know the specific yeah. lot number. Sort of to, to the west end of the deal, Bill. Do you know the lot number? Okay. Yeah, but we wanted to make council aware that the, the plant that we wor worked on with Claudia, uh, and I think she's satisfied that we've done everything. Uh, yeah, it's a lot 11. Yeah, uh, the tree, the cottonwood is on eight, and we've adjusted those lines around so that it's on the edge and it will make it. And then there's another tree right at the corner of 13, um, which is which is questionable. There are other ones in the open space and so forth, and all those are being um, uh, preserved. But we wanted to we wanted to make that clear. So, um, I guess I would ask you the question, Mr. Hale: Is is the language in in number five problematic, or or uh, um, Mr. Goodwin is is staff satisfied that they've they've made a good faith effort? Yes. Okay. They have, and yeah, I would those rather have be required to be replaced inch per inch within the yeah. tree preservation right. zone. I would rather instead of having insure. <laughs> You know, make a good faith effort. Insure is reasonably, you know, sure. reasonably assure or something like that. But it sounds like staff's okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to replace it, and we're going to, you know, it's going to be inch for inch. And we certainly could modify the condition if the applicant would be more comfortable. So we're going, to, Jennifer. Thank you. Yep. We can, I mean, inserting reasonably before insure, or we can say to ensure that to the greatest extent possible and to the satisfaction of staff, all landmark trees are preserved. So that gives us some latitude. And Is that the language that Jennifer just suggested? Is that acceptable? That's acceptable. Okay. And, and I think Claudia is happy. I mean, she said the last time she was happy with what we had done. Okay. And we were also supplied a, a record or a letter from the Muirfield Association stating the thing, same things you did for us. So we've got that document too. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Uh, let's begin with those that have signed up to comment. James Zeitzman, would you like to come forward, please? If you state your name and address for the record, please. James Zeitzman, 5701 Springburn Drive, Dublin, Ohio. Back up to, looks like, uh, lot number six. And uh, I just want to give my strong support to the project. Um, I've lived in this home since 1994, and I've always known something that's going to happen, and I've been hoping that something of this quality would be coming in. And I always felt that the city would make sure that we had something of good quality, and I'm pleased with what I've seen. The process has worked. The process has developed um, to create what looks to be a good plan, which will remove the uncertainty associated with you know my home when I go to sell it, there's always that question when you're backing up to undeveloped property, what's going to happen? And with this, it looks like it's going to be a nice development, probably a little more expensive than my home, which is certainly okay by me. And um, so I urge approval, and I want to give my full support to it. Thank you. Thank you. Alan Swearingen. Okay. Thank you. Russ Randall? Russ Randall, 8883 Belle Isle Court. And um, to echo uh, the last gentleman's comments, I'd like to um, say that I'm, I'm appreciative of the effort of the City Council and the Zoning Commission, and I think that the process has worked, that it's kind of, and, and would encourage you all to continue, or the Zoning Commission to continue to um, see that the, um, the goals and objectives and what's stated here will be continued to be met as the process moves forward. I'm sure there's going to be other ongoing considerations as the project comes about. Noise for certain streets, certainly 
Um, I think all great plans need to be adjusted sometime. There might be runoff concerns. Um, I, I don't know what the specifics were for the folks that lived up around one and two, but I do know that there was flooding that I haven't experienced where I live, but I know that they did prior. And so I just uh, hope that encourage that there's consideration given to those issues that people voiced that might have gotten lost into the broader um, the broader effort to make sure that this kind of zoning was done. So appreciate the efforts and um, uh, glad to see that it works and and I look forward to uh, this coming about. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, no one else has signed up to comment. Um, so with that, uh, if a council member would uh, perhaps like to um, make a motion incorporating the language that Jennifer proposed. Can we have some questions? I'm sorry, you sure may. Thank you. We've had this problem before where um, neighboring houses and other areas of the city are experience problems with drainage and runoff. How are we making sure this is addressed in this particular case? This may be a specific question that the city engineer would be better able to, to handle. However, I will say that often in, in cases like this with a remaining infill development site where there are stormwater issues, those issues are, are typically mitigated with the new development because there are stormwater controls developed as part of the site. And uh, as part of the Dublin Stormwater Code, the, the site is required to control uh, stormwater runoff uh, to the, the same level as the pre-development condition. Uh, and we expect that to actually be an even better condition with this development. But Paul, if you have any additional, yeah, and, and and I, you know, I sort of know the rules. But what happened in the previous cases where we're not now dealing with it in other areas of town? Well, I think in those cases where folks have come in and expressed concerns initially after the development occurs, I don't think you've ever really heard back from those folks, generally speaking unless there's been really a, a small localized problem. So Mr. Goodwin's correct in the infrastructure that gets put in with the development, uh, which is stormwater management piping, rear yard inlets. Uh, I really would say in the last 10 to 15 years, we've done a much better job of making sure that you, rear yards are drained. That's typically where we have those problems. And that um, those adjoining properties typically didn't have those sort of amenities provided. We end up putting that in right. um, now and they get the benefit of that. And so their problems are not aggravated, they're actually corrected with those rear yard structures. Because we have remodified our retrofit over around the, uh, off of Dublin Road. Pardon me? Over around off of Brand Road, we have had some neighborhoods we've retrofitted, is that not? Correct. But this is going to be different than that. Yeah, and well, and unlike probably the vast majority of Muirfield that doesn't have really any stormwater management, no stormwater detention to speak of. I mean, this development will. Okay. And as Mr. Goodwin said, that you know, post development, we actually predetermine the release rates, which are more strict than even pre development rates. So, we do thank a good you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Would somebody like to make that motion, please? Okay, I'll make the motion. Go ahead. Well, we have to change the condition. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. no I, 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 would, I would just, I would say that uh, uh, what's on the table for council to vote on uh, includes uh, an amendment to um, condition number five, uh, consistent with the language that Jennifer suggested into the record and that Mr. Hale, the record should reflect, agreed to. Is that sufficient? Second. Mr. Mr. Hale? Very good. Thank you. And if you call for the vote. Uh, Mr. Keenan, yes. Mr. Nancy Zerker, Mr. Reiner, I'm sorry, Mr. Gerber, yes. Vice Mayor Sale, yes. Mrs. Boring, yes. Mayor Lechleiter. Yes. Thank you. Someone could retrieve John. And there he is. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Goodwin. Uh, moving on to Ordinance 51 13. Vacating a portion of Drake Road right of way in the city of Dublin. Thank you. Whenever you're ready. The exhibit uh, here is associated with uh, the rezoning case that was just approved by city council. Uh, this has to do with an existing uh, right of way called Drake Road. Uh, there's a stub uh, that's currently paved that extends south from Springburn Drive. 
And uh, a portion of that road will be incorporated into the new development uh, with uh, the Stansbury subdivision and uh, renamed with the subsequent case that you'll hear here um, in a moment uh, to Stansbury Drive. Uh, the existing Drake Road right of way uh, with this action will be uh, vacated by the city. Uh, there's a combination, this is a fairly complicated slide, but uh, the right-of-way, the public right-of-way extends down the center line of Drake Road, and it's to the west of the center line. There's actually not public right-of-way, but instead uh, a highway easement to the east side uh, on the existing property. So what's happening is that the public right-of-way portion is being vacated, and a portion of that to the south will actually be incorporated into the, res the open space reserve as part of this development, which with the final plat will be deeded to the Mirfield Association. And then uh, a remainder of uh, this highway easement, uh, the same thing will happen with that. And then portions of this public right of way will remain and be incorporated into the new Stansbury Drive uh, with the development. Thank you. Any questions? John? Yes. Um, the uh, large trees that abut that roadway on the west side, are, are they going to be removed in this plan or are they going to be preserved? Do you recall if those trees are where they are in proximity to Springburn Drive? Yeah, they're, they're existing right along the, the uh, if you're going into that um, former horse farm, they're existing to the right. To the west side, then? Right. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, the applicant may be able to answer that. I, I am not familiar with those trees. I, I know the ones you're referring to. Sir, excuse me. If you'd state your name and address for the record, please. Sure. Uh, Bill Adams, 8824 Dunsinane Drive, Dublin, Ohio. Great, thank you. Uh, we've looked at that with the surveyor. Those trees are actually on the association property. Okay. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Okay, thank you. Hearing none, Ann, if you call for the vote, please. Mrs. Boring? Yes. Mr. Uh, Reiner? Yes. Mayor Lechleiter? Yes. Mr. Gerber? Yes. Mr. Keenan? Yes. Vice Mayor Sale? Yes. Mr. Mrs. Zerker? Yes. Thank you. Ordinance 52-13. Changing the name of Drake Road to Stansbury Drive in the city of Dublin, Ohio. Thank you. Mr. Goodwin. And resulting from the previous action by City Council, the remaining portion of Drake Road, which will be reincorporated uh, as uh, as Stansbury Drive with this development, uh, is proposed to be renamed as such. Any questions? Hearing none, Ann, if you call for the vote, please. Vice Mayor Sale? Yes. Mayor Lechleiter? Yes. Mr. Reiner? Yes. Mr. Keenan? Yes. Mr. Missy Zarka? Yes. Mr. Gerber? Yes. Mrs. Boring? Yes. Great. Thank you. Thank Thanks. You. Moving on to the first reading of ordinances, Ordinance 54-13. Amending the 2007 Dublin Community Plan. Introduction, please. I'll introduce it. Thank you. Mr. Goodwin, working overtime tonight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> As council knows, staff has undertaken a comprehensive uh, update to the community plan over the past year. We introduced this concept early in 2012 to city council uh, as we were approaching the five-year mark since the 2007 community plan update. I think everybody was surprised that five years had gone by so quickly. Uh, and one of the goals of the community plan is that we uh, take these periodic reviews of the plan to make sure that it remains relevant and up to date. And as you know, uh, one of the big things that uh, staff has done this with this update is to convert the entire format of the community plan to a web-based format. And we see a lot of advantages to this approach in terms of cost savings for the city, allowing us to be uh, more efficient and uh, to hopefully, as time goes on, incorporate periodic amendments and updates uh, as needed. And um, I don't have a formal PowerPoint presentation, but what I am prepared to do this evening is to uh, highlight some key portions of the community plan website itself and focus on what some of the, the larger items of amendment uh, are. Good. Thank you. The Planning and Zoning Commission has undertaken a number of reviews uh, of the proposed amendments to the community plan uh, from July through July of last year through April 
uh, of this year. And uh, they focused on, on a number of items, including the various uh, objectives and strategies throughout the community plan. I believe there are, I don't recall the exact number, but there are over 300 specific policy statements uh, in nearly every chapter of the plan. Uh, there are some amendments to the future land use map and to the thoroughfare plan, and uh, also some amendments to the special area plans. The bulk of the proposed amendments this year have to do with the incorporation of the Bird Street District and the West Innovation District plans into the community plan and references to those planning initiatives throughout the document. Uh, planning kicked off the, uh, the community plan amendment process last June with a public kickoff meeting at the Dublin Community Recreation Center. A lot of people to come uh, get a feel for uh, an early version of the community plan website and to provide comment at that time. Uh, also more recently this year we held a, an alternative digital version of a public open house as a live webcast uh, to allow people who may not have the time to attend a, a physical meeting to uh, still review uh, items uh, presented by staff and to comment on those in real time and uh, i have here on the screen the uh, the community plan website itself and i'll provide a, a quick uh, orientation to the various aspects of it but for those who uh, may be watching this on TV and uh, would like to, to visit the Community Plan website, they can go directly to the City of Dublin's main website, and there's a link at the, at the top of the page. Uh, this website is formatted uh, similarly to the overall city uh, website, so users of that website will be familiar with basically how to get around and orient themselves with this information. And for those who might wish to, uh, to watch that earlier webcast, uh, it is available on the front page of the website. The community plan website is set up essentially to incorporate all of the content from the 2007 Dublin Community Plan, and that's an over 300 page document. You're all very familiar with it. It's a, it's a hefty book. Uh, and we think that the, the web-based format gives us quite an advantage in maintaining that uh, wide variety of information. There are 10 chapters in the adopted community plan in addition to an introduction section. And all of those chapters can be accessed through a drop-down menu at the top of the page, uh, moving from the introduction all the way through implementation. Uh, there are also direct links to each of the special area plans uh, and also the future land use map and the thoroughfare plan. We did some, when we first putting together this concept, we did some surveys of uh, the general public and, and regular users of the community plan and wanted to know what are the pieces of the plan that they need to access uh, on a regular basis or as quickly as possible. And those tend to be the special area plans, the future land use map, and the thoroughfare plan, those key policy elements of the community plan that uh, members of staff use uh, to review development proposals that uh, developers or property owners may use to understand what the plan recommends for their property or property nearby. I'll visit a couple of portions of the site just to, to give a f uh, flavor of uh, how the document is organized. So I'll move to the land use chapter. And this includes each of the sections of the adopted plan uh, divided into what would be posts in, in website terminology. Uh, and all of those sections can be accessed from uh, essentially a table of contents on the side of the page or also by scrolling down the page and accessing each of those individual items. So for instance, key planning issues, and this is one of the items that staff spent a lot of time on in the land use chapter, updating uh, discussion of the various uh, residential land use issues and commercial land use issues that are relevant to the city, to the city uh, especially in light of the Bridge Street, Bridge Street District Planning Initiative and the West Innovation District Planning Initiatives. And the Planning Commission reviewed that item as, as well and had some comments and suggestions for revision. Uh, some of the uh, other specific items that the Planning Commission was interested in is how the community plan deals with the concept of sustainability. Uh, that's a word that itself does, did not previously appear very often in the community plan. However, uh, there are a wide number of aspects of the plan that deal with either environmental preservation or uh, economic uh, health of the city, uh, all items that have to do generally with uh, the sustainable development and preservation uh, of the well-being of the city. Uh, so what we did to accommodate the commission's concern was in uh, the foundations chapter of the community plan, which in includes a number of 
uh, what we call building blocks, essentially the, the core principles that serve as the foundation of the plan. We added one uh, entitled sustainability that explains how important that concept is to the city. One of the other items that the Planning Commission thought needed a, a little more um, time and discussion spent on in the community plan is uh, how public transportation may play a greater role in the city's future. Uh, and what we did was we took a, a number of uh, items from the adopted Economic Advancement Zone Plan, which went into great detail about future bus and potential regional or statewide rail uh, initiatives that could impact Dublin in the future. We incorporated those into the transportation chapter of the plan and broadened those concepts in terms of the, the overall layout of the city and how public transportation may be enhanced in the city in the future. As I mentioned, uh, most of the items uh, that are being impacted by this amendment to the community plan have to do with the Bird Street District and the West Innovation District initiatives. And, and I'll briefly uh, review those area plans because those are the most significant uh, amendments to the area plans. Going to the special area plan section uh, of the page. And for those who may uh, be seeing this website for the first time, uh, one of the things that we're really excited about is the interactive nature of the embedded maps throughout the website. Um, if you recall the, the layout of the special area plans in the adopted printed document, they include a number of design recommendations that are referenced by number on another page and require a user to go back and forth to try to understand what uh, those numbers reference. Uh, we think we have a, a little bit more of an intuitive system here. Uh, this map shows all of the special area plan boundaries, and somebody interested in any one of those can click on that individual item. This is the Bird Street District boundary, and then click again to access that area plan. And what we've done with uh, this incorporation of the Bird Street District is we've taken the adopted 2010 Bird Street Corridor Vision Report and incorporated that entire document as an area plan. We've updated it uh, where appropriate uh, with new information over the past couple of years uh, from the extended planning process that resulted from the adoption of, of that document. So all of the sections of the vision report and the earlier foundations report can be found uh, on the side of the page here. And the other key thing that we've done is updated the actual graphic. If you recall, and I'm gonna make this larger, if you recall, the illustrative vision plan that was included in the adopted vision report was a very detailed graphic. and It showed uh, essentially new buildings over the entirety of the Bird Street District, uh, as well as open spaces in the street grid. Uh, now that we have an adopted development code, a lot of those details will be governed by that, those development regulations. Uh, what we've done with the proposed area plan is we've removed a lot of those details. Specifically, uh, we're not showing individual building footprints and what we're focusing on instead is the overall street system and the block framework that develops from that street system. Uh, so this is generally consistent with the Bridge Street Corridor Street Network map that's included in the Adopted Development Code. Another feature that, that you'll see if you visit any of the area plans are these colored dots. And these are those design recommendations that I referenced earlier that in the adopted plan, uh, those are numbered, they're found on another page and you have to flip back and forth uh, to review what those items are. These are now clickable uh, pieces of content. So for instance, you click on this item and I realize uh, it may not be possible for everybody to read this here, but this says a future pedestrian bridge to connect the east side of the river. And there's an image here and you can click on that image, and this is from the, the more recent uh, Scioto Corridor Urban Design Framework process that, that the city has undertaken. So uh, these are much more interactive ways to, uh, to obtain this information. Before I go on to uh, another area plan, are there any specific questions about the Bird Street District plan? No. Anyone? I, I'm assuming that um, especially since it's now web-based, that you will continuously update both maps and any of the land use as we develop it. Absolutely. Uh, 
And as you know, included in, in your packet, there is a, a draft administrative order which lays out a policy for the continual maintenance of technical items throughout the plan. There's a wide variety of facts, figures, uh, base maps, just things as simple as aerial photographs that we update on an annual basis. So we'll be able to essentially update those technical items in, in real time so the plan will always be relevant and up to date. Of course, there are also items that staff will not be updating without approval by uh, city council and recommendation by the Planning and Zoning Commission. Those are outlined in that memo as well. Also, um, as you know, of course, because I know you work closely with Morpsey, and they have a very engaged system as well. Is there any interaction uh, with their system that, so you don't have to duplicate, but if you press the button you know, on it, that it would actually be taking you to the Morpsey level of detail of certain like bike paths or something like that that they have? There are opportunities throughout the community plan website to provide direct links to outside agencies such as Morpsey. Uh, we have incorporated a number of those, although I will say that there are likely other uh, opportunities to provide those types of links throughout the website and, and whenever we find those items we will certainly connect to uh, those other agencies. Right. Anyone else? The other uh, specific area plan that I thought I'd touch on very quickly here is the West Innovation District plan. Council adopted the Economic Advancement Zone Plan in 2011 and Associated Development Regulations, similarly to the Bird Street District Initiative, uh, for an area that has had a number of names over the years uh, and previously was referred to as the Central Ohio Innovation Center, then the EAZ, and now the West Innovation District. And uh, we have incorporated, uh, as with the Bird Street Corridor Vision Report, the entirety of the EAZ plan. Uh, renamed as the West Innovation District Plan and, and rolled that into uh, the community plan. So all of that information is updated and incorporated in the plan. This is a new graphic that shows the proposed street system for the West Innovation District and the general pattern of land uses uh, throughout that area as well. Uh, and so you, you get a flavor for how the area plans are formatted within the, the website. Uh, most of the other area plans uh, received very minor um, clarifications or updates. Uh, in some cases, there were capital improvements that have been completed, and those are reflected as such. Um, as described in your memo as well, uh, we have done a, a somewhat more significant update to the Kaufman Park plan based on parks and open spaces, more recent master plan for that area. So, so that plan has been graphically updated to reflect that master plan. Uh, and also, as noted in your memo, um, we did take an opportunity to illustrate the most recent uh, version of the I-270 US-33 interchange, at least the most recent at the time, but uh, that has changed again um, uh, through the ODOT review, and we will, uh, upon adoption of the plan, we'll revise that accordingly. I'll also briefly uh, provide an overview of amendments to the future land use map. As with the special area plans, this map is incorporated as an interactive map. You also received a hard copy in your packet, and we will add a, a downloadable PDF version to the website as well. And all of these maps can be printed by the user, so if somebody's interested in a particular location, you can zoom into that, that area and print that out. The proposed uh, amendments to the future land use map also have uh, a lot to do with the Bridge Street Corridor and the West Innovation District planning initiatives. Uh, if you look at this, this map at this scale, uh, it may look relatively similar to the adopted 2007 land use map. Uh, for those visiting the site, you'll see a number of red target symbols. Those are pinpointing where specific amendments are being proposed. Uh, a number that you'll find uh, throughout the city have to do with uh, approved rezonings that uh, essentially change the, the future land use, but those are relatively minor and, and not many of them. Uh, one, for instance, would be the Delta Energy uh, development at uh, Emerald Parkway and Perimeter Drive, which was previously planned as park or open space, uh, was subsequently rezoned as an office development, so we've updated the map accordingly. Uh, but we have taken the opportunity to incorporate the Bridge Street District. Uh, you'll see here uh, in this uh, auburn color, 
uh, as a new land use classification, we previously had a mixed use town center classification. It really was focusing on the Dublin Village Center site itself. We now have a, a much broader uh, area that we're dealing with in Bridge Street, and we've expanded that classification as an urban core classification to reflect the higher density and more truly urban walkable character intended for that area. Also, the purple areas shown along the Shire Rings corridor and uh, in the West Innovation District and also north of State Route 161 uh, along the US 33 corridor. Um, most of those areas were included in the 2007 plan as uh, a combination of two density levels in, a, in categories called flex office R&D. And we've, because we now have new development regulations with the tech flex uh, district and the various innovation districts, which themselves govern density and, and how development will happen in these areas, we thought that was an opportunity to simplify the map to combine those classifications into one flex office research and development category. And finally, amendments to the thoroughfare plan. Uh, similarly, uh, those are, are largely brought about by the Bridge Street District and West Innovation District initiatives. <coughs> Within the Bridge Street District area, <coughs> Planning has worked with engineering to incorporate the, the primary framework of the street system that is planned for the Bridge Street District uh, with the, the corresponding street families uh, throughout this area. Uh, one big change you'll notice from uh, the street network map that appeared in the Bridge Street Development Code is uh, at, that, at that time we had planned for two new bridge crossings over the Scioto River through the more recent urban uh, design framework for the Scioto River Corridor. Uh, that, that thinking has been revised to focus solely on the pedestrian bridge in the south portion of the river corridor and a single new vehicular uh, bridge in the north portion of the corridor. And that's reflected in the new thoroughfare plan. And also for the West Innovation District, we've similarly incorporated the planned street network uh, system that's included, that was originally included in the Economic Advancement Zone plan. The one last comment uh, I'd like to make about the website itself is uh, this site is entirely searchable. So for a member of the, the public who may not be that familiar with the community plan, uh, they can simply go to the upper right-hand corner uh, of the site, click here, type in a keyword, and it will uh, navigate the user to all the, the locations throughout the plan that their keyword may appear. Uh, so it's a, another way to find information, a very lengthy document. Uh, finally, uh, we've incorporated public comment options throughout the website, so somebody visiting the community plan, if they have a particular interest in a topic, they're welcome to provide a comment that will appear on the website itself. Uh, also, they can provide an anonymous uh, question or comment that will be sent by email directly to staff, and when we receive those, we respond directly to, uh, to the member of the public. With that, that, those are all of the, the key items that I wanted to review this evening. I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have or to delve further into a specific uh, portion of the website if there's a proposed amendment uh, that council would like uh, more information on. Um, and with that, planning recommends approval uh, of the proposed amendments to the community plan at July 1st, uh, second reading. Thank you. Questions, comments? Justin great for all job. your work. Yeah. Great job to staff and the Planning and Zoning Commission and everybody involved. I really love the idea of a web-based document as well. I think that that's really exciting and um, just makes life so much easier. And then we don't have to carry around these big books anymore. And we, we did some review early on of other communities that may be taking this approach. And uh, at least at that time, there weren't that many. We did find one truly web-based um, community plan or comprehensive plan out there. Um, and I, I'm not shy to say I think that ours functions much better. I'm sure it does. Great. Well, as uh, Justin indicated, we'll have the second reading then at the July 1st council meeting. Thank you again. Um, Thank you. Moving on to ordinance 59-13. Authorizing appropriation of a 0.201 acre more or less fee symbol interest of which 0.178 acres more or less is present road occupied 
and a 0.036 acre more or less temporary construction easement from John L. Reynolds and Colleen M. Reynolds. Thank you. Uh, I'll call you up when it's your time. Okay. Thanks. What do we have here? We need an introduction. Introduction. Thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you. Good evening. Before you this evening is an ordinance authorizing the city law director to file a case for appropriation for present road occupied right of way and a temporary easement um, in conjunction with the Kaufman brand roundabout uh, intersection improvement scheduled for construction this summer. Staff recommends approval at the July 1st council meeting of this legislation and we're happy to answer any questions you may have. Questions? Anyone? Ms. Colleen Reynolds. My name is Colleen Reynolds. I am a Dublin resident currently living at 5222 Forest Run Drive in Woods of Indian Run. I am also the owner of the property at 5151 Brand Road, which is under consideration tonight. Um, I have a couple questions. I think my first question is there's a notation on here about uh, uh, dispensing with a public hearing. And I'm curious. It looks like most of these others have gone to a second reading, and I'm curious on if somebody can tell me why we don't get a second reading and what the meaning of dispensing it at a public hearing would be, please? You, it's going to a second hearing. It will be. July 1st. Can you explain to me what the uh, verbiage request to dispense with a public hearing means, please? It's been withdrawn. It's going to a second hearing. So that's withdrawn. OK, okay. thanks. Um, uh, again, I, I am a resident of, of Dublin, have been living here since 1980. I was a student through Dublin schools went away from my higher education, decided I wanted to bring my family back here to raise my family because I love it here. Um, I saw you two weeks ago. I stood up in front of you and explained to you that I was working with Mrs. Ott to come to a reasonable agreement so we could uh, actually uh, give you our land or, or give you an easement on our land rather than it being appropriated. So I'm back because it looks to me like uh, so far we haven't been able to reach an agreement, but we are working towards that. Um, I think our biggest challenge right now is uh, the comps. Um, I've, been, I've been told by uh, Sarah, we sent her a counter offer last week. We've been told that she was on vacation, so I actually didn't get a chance to have a conversation with her until today. Um, she explained to me that she's taking your lead and said that you're in charge and cannot reply to me without direction. So today I come in front of you to speak to you directly and I'm asking for your consideration as the decision makers. Um, I am not interested in standing in your way. Rather, I would prefer to work with you to reach an agreement that is fair and equitable for all parties, and I hope that we can still do that. Uh, I am not interested in selling my land to you guys in fee simple. I am trying to negotiate with Mrs. Ott an easement in perpetuity, which will allow you guys to accomplish the exact same thing rather than taking my land in fee simple. Um, you guys, I have, I have 2.3 acres. Um, you guys, I say you guys, uh, I am being asked to sell you in fee simple almost 10% of my lot. Um, for that 10%, I am being offered uh, $1,046. I'm guessing that for most of the land, uh, for most of our lots in Dublin, that's a pretty big chunk of land, and I think that it's worth more than $1,046. I don't want to go to court. I would rather work through this as uh, rational adults to come to an agreement on a fair settlement. But again, $1,046 is not fair for 210 seven acre in, of my land in Dublin. Um, I was presented comps by the city's appraiser and I brought them with me to share with you if you're interested. Um, currently the offer that I'm being given is $55,000, increasing it to $60,000. Um, but the comps that were given to me by the city's appraiser do not support that value. That is an undervaluation for my land. Uh, most specifically, the comp that would be the most recent and probably the closest comp to my land is a property on Kaufman Road that was purchased by the school board. It was purchased two years ago for $102,000 an acre. Uh, the other comp that your appraisal gave to me was a land on Brand Road that was purchased in 2007, which as I, you and I both know is a little bit old, but at that time, five, six years ago, it was still sold for $87,000. Uh, the other comps that I've been given, again, as you may recall, were flag lots on the other side of the city, on the other side of the bridge. 
over in the uh, Summit View area and Riverside Drive, that is where I feel the abnormally low value is coming from because those properties are valued in the fifty and $55,000. It's different than the land over here, clearly supported by the two comps that your appraiser gave me. Um, in addition to that, I've been able to find two additional comps that I've sent to Sarah that I've presented her with in addition to my proposal to support the valuation that I'm requesting. Uh, again, I don't want to go to court. I'd like to work through this as rational adults to a fair settlement. Um, I understand that several of my neighbors have been approached about their land that is PRO land as well, and they have been told, they told the city that they didn't want to convey it, and the city said okay, and they walked away. So my other question is, why is it that we can't offer to do the same thing, and that is continue to give you guys the easement on our land for the property that you're already using, and allow us to continue to own our land. Same as the other land, I'd like to offer you guys an easement in perpetuity, which allows you to accomplish what you're looking to accomplish, which is the uh, extension for the roundabout at the Kaufman Brand Corridor. Uh, I, I, again, stood before you two weeks ago and I told you I support that. I support the addition of the roundabout. I think it's a great addition to our city and I think it's long overdue. But I don't understand why you have to come in and strong arm me and take my property in fee simple rather than taking the easement in perpetuity, which I've offered, which allows you to accomplish the exact same thing. Uh, again, today I'm asking for your consideration as the decision makers. I'm not standing in your way. I'm asking you, actually, I should say, uh, in a budget of what's well over a million dollars, maybe even two million dollars, the difference between our negotiations right now is a mere sixteen hundred dollars. Um, your appraisal came to me and says that my land is valued at eighty four thousand eight hundred dollars. When you take ten percent of my land, 10% of that number from the appraised value from your appraisal is $8,480. Again, I'm asking for a fraction of that. I'm asking for 60% of that in an effort to be fair and equitable to come to that agreement. Um, our negotiations currently are $1,600. That's the difference between the agreement that I've proposed and the agreement that you guys as the decision makers have given back to Ms. Ott to propose to me. Uh, it certainly seems to me that it would cost us more than that to go to court and resolve this issue. So I ask you today, I stand in front of you and ask that you direct Sarah to approve my request, uh, something that I think is fair for all parties. In the grand scheme of a million dollar property or project, you're talking about $1,600. Again, an easement in perpetuity allows you guys the opportunity to ex accomplish the exact same thing that it would do by by uh, by taking it from me in fee simple. Uh, and again, if we come to an agreement, the project can move forward without cause, without additional um, issues, and without having to file a court case, which is going to end up being a costly proposition, I assume. Is that all? Unless you have any questions for me. Any questions? Okay. Thank you. Uh, Mr. John Reynolds. Good evening, everybody. My name is John Reynolds. Obviously, I live at 5222 Forest Run Drive, also the owner at uh, 5151 Brand Road. Um, I guess my biggest concern, and I got a question for the council members, if you can enlighten me, and, and forgive my ignorance uh, uh, to the law. My biggest question is um, in regards to the city has kind of broken it down into three parts, so to speak, this offer. There's a temporary construction easement, which I get. There's the, the wanting to purchase the land, which we said, hey, can we just give you a, a, an easement to widen the culvert, regrade the land, chop down our trees, not replace them. Um, it's, it's the bigger part. We, I think we can come to agreement on that. We're not trying to get rich. We're trying to be treated fairly here. My biggest problem is with the, the offering me a dollar for 0.178 acres. Road, granted, it's it's PRO land, um, but for the last 13 years, when I bought that land, I paid for that land, valued same as the rest. There was no stipulation to it not being value, valuable. Um, I paid taxes on it for the last 13 years. Um, and now the city feels it's their right to take it. 
and I'm being told that it's legal. Um, I'm being told that, um, that that's, that's just how it is, that there's law to support that. And when I sit there and I think about it, and we started this meeting looking at this flag, pledging allegiance to it, and I think about our forefathers and our Constitution, and I, correct me if I'm wrong, but I understand the Fifth Amendment to say just compensation. A dollar for .178 acres in the middle of Dublin is just. You want to use that road, from my understanding is, Dublin wants to own that road for safety reasons, um, for maintenance, for police, for, for the greater good. Now, I guess my question to the city is, we aren't going to annex. We were in Washington Township. We're not planning on annexing into the city. Um, and I feel like we're being strong-armed in this situation because we're told that if we were in Dublin, we wouldn't do it. But because you're not, we want to take that land, and we've got the right to do that. And I, and I, I struggle with that. I, I, I don't understand how that works. So my question is, Dublin takes that land. They've got, they own it. They've got the right to it in fee simple. They can patrol it. They can do whatever it is that the, the city needs to do. What happens when, now that road, obviously we don't live there and we've got a tenant that lives there. Um, what happens when that home gets broken into and he calls the police? What happens then? Because I know what happens now. Can anybody answer that question? Mr. Reynolds, do you have a point to make? My point is, I think it's, I think it's excessive use of power to say, I'm going to take your land and give you a dollar for it. It's insulting, it's un-American, and it's not right. And all we're asking for is a fair compensation, a fair, have the land, but be fair about it. I mean, you can't just take my land, it's un-American. If you want to use it for the greater good, we don't stand in the way. We want, I'm for the roundabout, I'm for the bike path. I don't necessarily like everything that's been done. Uh, but I support it, all in all. And that's why we said, hey, have an easement. Take the land. Use the land. That's fine. But pay us fairly. I, 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 I beg the city of that. I think, I think it's, you're using excessive force. And again, in the grand scheme of things, we're talking about, even, even if we were to go at top dollar and go and say you were going to pay fair market value for that land, we're still talking about a few thousand dollars here. In the grand scheme of things, it's, it's nothing. But to me, it's the principle of the thing. I don't want to get a lawyer involved. It's the last thing I want to get involved. But if, I mean, I'm not going to be treated unjustly. So thank you for your time. Thank you. I have a question. Um, does, does our offer, not to you, sir, thank you. Does our offer to this property owner um, differ in principle to the offers made to other property owners uh, in connection with this overall project? No, a key point here is, is that this is present road occupied. The easement along Brand Road was granted in the mid-1800s where property lines stretched the center line. Properties that have not annexed into the city of Dublin, therefore the township it has ownership responsibilities or, or maintenance responsibilities on that section of roadway because the underlying parcel size stretches to the center of the road. You have other places along Brand Road where parcels have annexed in, and this issue's been addressed um, it, it, during those pro proceedings and in follow-up conversations. The state statute's clear that when there is an existing easement like this, that it has a, a comp compensation value of a dollar, and that is what we've consistently offered, and it's let's just be consistent with what the state statute indicates. What is the, I don't understand what the memo we have isn't a dollar, so I'm, I'm confused as to what we're talking about. So one, one dollar of this amount is the present road occupied. The remaining $3,324 is for a temporary easement, for some site improvements that are within some new right of way for um, approximately two thousandths of an acre of additional right-of-way. So that, that is how the compensation formula is based. That's consistent with how for, for oh gosh, I'm not sure how long, a long time, that we've calculated the value of these with our appraiser consistent with the state law. And part of the reason we're looking to get the PRO in fee simple is so that as part of this project, we'll also annex into the city that roadway so that it is in the city for enforcement issues. 
Um, we did that recently at Cosgrave Shire Rings where we did that intersection improvement project. The roadway that was currently not in uh, the city of Dublin because of the, the property owners were, were still in the township, we annexed that roadway in for the same reason. So we have the same issues with the repair of the road that is, has that to the, middle, to the middle line. Those of you who traveled that may have seen recently where there was a stretch of that that was the Franklin County came out and they were doing something for all day long and they kind of pounded some, some asphalt in there and it really did not fix it in the kind of standards that we're accustomed to here. So we had our normal roadway and then township that wasn't done appropriately by the county and then back to our roadway. So it's really about standardizing and making everything right. consistent. Mm -hmm. That's correct. Well, I guess my question was, you mentioned Cosgrave Road and, and other property owners along Brand Road that are in Washington Township. And, and my question was, you know, have we treated them all the same? I, I understand there's a difference of opinion here regarding numbers, mm -hmm. uh, dollar figures and so forth. But I mean, in principle, you know, with respect to present road occupied, offering a dollar, et cetera, has, has, has that been consistent throughout? For this intersection project, that has been consistent. We are still in negotiations on other pieces of property throughout the city that have PRO. Okay. Any other questions? I, I, I don't know that I have a question as much as um, I guess both Mr. and Mrs. Reynolds made some pretty serious accusations. And um, you're, you're stating that the law is this dollar when it's not in the city? Is that what, what differentiates it or what is it? When it's there? already encumbranced by, this is already an easement it's being used for roadway and so there's no real value. They put I the see. dollar on right. it because you're not using it for private purposes. Right. And, and it just has to do with, it used to be roadways were encumbered with an easement and now we, we acquire right of way so that the roadway is actually owned by the city instead of owned by the property owner and uh, the easement gives us the right to maintain it. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I, it sounds to me like they also raised the issue that they had concerns that because they had elected not to um, annex into Dublin, we were being, they were being treated differently. But it doesn't sound from what you've described to date, that they're being treated differently, but we still want to be able to uh, take care of, like Mike was saying, as, as well as staff, that we want to be responsible for this rather than leaving it up to either the township or the homeowner. Right, and it just it helps with consistency, and when there's enforcement issues and maintenance issues, uh, then the city will be responsible and will we'll provide those services. Any other questions or comments? Okay. Uh, we will have the second reading then on July 1st. Okay. Thank you. Moving on to the resolution portion of our agenda. Uh, if I am not mistaken, that would be resolution 37-13. Accepting the lowest and best bid for the Kaufman Park Phase 1 construction project. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, tonight we're asking uh, for acceptance of a, a award, a contract award to Danbert uh, for the f phase one of the Coffin Park expansion project. This project really is uh, uh, a lot of infrastructure and kind of setting the stage for subsequent phases of Coffin Park expansion. This one has a, a, a fair amount of utility burial along the old post road roadbed as well as uh, three bridges and uh, realigning the entrance to the rec center off of Commerce Parkway uh, and associated paths and landscaping. Um, do have uh, a couple of exhibits if you want to see them tonight. Yeah, I would please. I can see them. There they are. Uh, oh, they this one here oh, is really oh, kind of showing the uh, uh, kind of the zone of, uh, of construction and where the this hand is the main bridge that's going in. There's a, another pedestrian bridge 
along a tributary to the uh, South Fork right here, as well as a, uh, a bridge that will be um, over by kind of some of the uh, maintenance buildings uh, and storage barns. Uh, that particular bridge actually will uh, have a removable deck uh, and only since we really are not welcoming the public over by those utility buildings, uh, uh, the deck will be removed when we're not staging a special event. Uh, this is what has existed during the Irish Festival for a number of years and, and, and so we're trying to get away from that and upgrade it a little bit. And uh, this is kind of a render, this is a rendering of that same bridge location as seen from the existing shelter house there at Kaufman Park. Uh, you can see the bridge in the background. This would be more from the uh, uh, viewpoint from the um, uh, over by the histor historical house. And, uh, and here's on your, you're basically in the, the old post road road bed now uh, looking uh, north, northwest at, at this bridge. This will be the main bridge, and it is of a scale or of a width to uh, accommodate the, uh, the activities uh, during the Irish Festival. As said in the staff report, we're, we're st uh, planning on getting underway with this contract. Um, soon after the 2013 Irish Festival and with and then some of the construction is bound to carry over and into 14 but we're real confident that uh, all the scars will be healed and the site will be uh, beautiful for the 2014 Irish Festival and with that glad to answer any questions question the only question I have, and I was hoping you were going to show us a picture, you said that you're um, realigning the recreation uh, to the recreation off of commerce, and I, this doesn't show me a realignment. Uh, yeah, the one, I mean, it's similar in, in footprints. When you look at the existing, well, the one thing in your packet, you should have two exhibits in your packet. The first one really is. Uh, an area of existing conditions. And you can see the basic when you're going in the rec center, you're going straight down a very straight post road and then going to a uh, Y um, kind of intersection there. Then when you go to this slide here that you, it's up on the screen that you do have, you can see that there's actually more of a radius in going into, uh, so we're taking away the formality of the existing post road. Uh, given some curves to it, as well as uh, uh, simplifying that whole uh, Y intersection um, before the, br the existing bridge going into the rec center. So if you kind of flip back and forth between the two exhibits, you can see the differences in that alignment. Maybe uh, for our next meeting, um, I, I mean, we'll vote on this tonight, I think, but could you give us like one of this, this kind of a map to show us what it really is going to look like? Yeah, Instead yeah, of yeah. this kind, which is hard to, for my lay eye to find. Yeah, we, we, yeah, sure, we can, we Thank can you. give you an exhibit that clarifies that. Any other questions or comments? No, I just want to say that, you know, I'm going to uh, welcome this park, but, you know, and uh, I was uh, outvoted on this issue many times, but, you know, I just, this will pretty much put the nail in the coffin for an east-west connector. And I know a number of council people here have felt that also, and I appreciate their support. But, um, you know, I think the city sorely needed that east-west connector uh, since there really isn't anything unless you go all the way up to uh, Brand Road and Kaufman Road. But uh, so I will vote for this tonight only because all these years I've been in opposition to not having that east-west connector and still have the park appear and have either a tunnel or a void dock system to get into the park but i just think it's um, you know i really think it's the wrong thing to do for for traffic and a whole other host of reasons uh, related to the benefit of this city so i will still support this but um, with great regret
And it's gonna be a beautiful park, Fred, don't get me wrong, but oh, traffic-wise, I just think it's the worst thing we could have done. What we moved perimeter people to drive. perimeter. Yeah, but, geez. And that's been widened and the roundabout and yeah. everything. It's functioning really well, isn't it, Paul? And we're giving up a tremendous amount of valuable real estate over there as well. Yeah. Uh, for development purposes later. I, I agree with you, John. Yeah, it's just, just, just so wrong, but, you know. John, I this is a democracy and we all vote, so. Well, know. John, I agree with you also. I wasn't here when the council voted on that closure of that road, but uh, you know, uh, it's very clear to me that uh, we missed an opportunity there. I don't think there's a planner in the planet that wouldn't land in this town and say, whatever you do, you gotta make that your east-west connector. I don't care if you brought the guy in from the Federal Republic of Germany or Zambezi or someplace else, said you're a planner, what should we be doing here for the greater good in this community? They'd say, make that the connection across your city. But it's a very wide road, huge setbacks, and uh, all along it is our best road for that particular aspect as for not infringing on people's properties. And I just think it really was an important aspect of the uh, of the city. Thank you. And if you call for the vote, please. Uh, Mrs. Boring? Yes. Vice Mayor Saley? Yes. Mr. Reiner? Yes. Mr. Gerber? Yes. Uh, Mr. Keenan? Yes. Mr. Nancy Zerker? Yes. And Mayor Lechleiter? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Staff comments. Uh, the only item um, a couple weeks ago, well, a couple months ago when we had our last meeting uh, with regard to the MKSK work that's going on, and they were in the process of prepare, preparing a framework plan, we have been reviewing the drafts of that back and forth, and that will be ready within the next week or so, and we will get that out to council for your review. And then at some point in, I don't know if we'll have time in August, but if, we, if you would prefer to have a meeting, uh, set to review that or if you want to schedule some time before a council meeting or as part of um, Under other presentations we can do that as well But just wanted to let you know that that is almost completed and you will be getting that within the next few weeks And that's it. Thank you Moving on to roundtable Mike, would you like to lead off? Thank you Rick um, I didn't have anything until I saw this letter that Marsha, well, I'm sorry, it came from Jeff Tyler to the uh, Sunrise Senior Living uh, Inc. folks. And, uh, you know, that's one issue that I hear from residents all the time. What's mm -hmm. going to happen with that eyesore up there? And, and I'm glad to see this letter, and uh, I'm very anxious to see what kind of input, Marsha, or what kind of response we get back. And, uh, and I hope that we uh, adhere to those, those dates. Uh, back on it looks like that they have uh, 180 days to do something if it's deemed abandoned maybe you can just July 8th so they have to, they have to get back to us by then okay so I'm, I'll be anxious to hear what they have to say can I follow up with because I had a question about that so my question had to do with why did we wait till now to start this process was there something legally that we weren't able to send a letter? Because this is, you know, a long, now, we, now we're just putting in writing what we're intending to do to start the process. Well, we've, we have been working with them for quite some period of time, and they had an active building permit that they received extensions. And so they had to go through that process, or we had to go through that process, and they had the right to um, extend those permits. So you have like five years under a PUD to complete that? And they have, uh, the building permit was for a year, year's period, and then they received an extension. And so now their extension has expired, and that's what we're working with them through this process. Because I, I did happen to notice the other day that it, it was, in fact, I had written it down as something to bring up, so I'm glad we got the letter, um, that it's really deteriorating now. I mean, it, you know, for a while it didn't look so bad, yeah. but now we have a new facility going up right there, and this would be a very bad site for them to have to be looking at. Well, it looks like somebody, I drove by there the other day, and it looked like someone was working over there. Put up some, uh... um, we've had a series of meetings with them, and part of, I usually in the meetings, things come up with regard to the maintenance of the grounds, mm -hmm. and after our meetings, then they go do some additional cleanup. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> um, like I said, I'd be anxious to hear what they have to say. Uh, 
That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. John? I have nothing, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Lee. Yes, um, I was interested in knowing um, the wood fences that are like along Kaufman Road, um, like between Terra Hill and Ross Common or so, and I think there's on Brand Road by Brandon Way. Who is responsible for those fences? Well, the fences on Kaufman Road, that's been a longstanding issue. We currently um, are in the process of reviewing what the city's options may be. We just had a, a survey that was completed because once we had the aerials from GIS, it appeared that the fence goes in and out of right of way, and we do have some of that. So we're currently working with the uh, homeowners associations on that issue and uh, plan to meet at staff again to try to figure out what our options are. And it may be where some of the fence is um, taken down and some of the fence is repaired. So we're still in the process of working on that. As far as along Brand Road. Um, Excuse me, Marsha. I'm, I'm sorry. What homeowners association are you working with? Um, How many Charlotte's not here. It's, it's the, the condo association. And I believe Hemingway, um, also their association, there's three of them that we're working with. So we can get okay. you the, the well, detail. If you, if you keep us <coughs> advised with respect to the specific details, and Marilee, I'm sorry. No, that's but fine. I, yeah, I've been working on this for, you know, the 12 years I've been on council. So anyway, I'm not suggesting an outcome, but just to be kept. Well, there's a lot of it broken now, so there needs right. to be an outcome. <laughs> yeah. Right. So that that's, it gets repaired because it looks, you know, that's a bit heavily trafficked. Both those exactly. roads are heavily trafficked. And, and some of their <clears throat> concern that's been expressed is that <clears throat> the um, Irish Festival on the 4th of July, they believe that <clears throat> the fence helps keep people out of out of their yards or their property. <clears throat> Excuse me. And so we're also looking at options of, is there some vegetation that can replace the fence? So that's something that we're looking at and we'll have discussions with them as well. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm sorry, you were gonna ask about right, Brand Road right. then. Well, Brand Road was another one where by in front of Brandon Way, or yeah. uh, there's, there's a fence there as well and it's got a lot of broken pieces. And I, too. I think that fence is in our um, reserved so we can follow up to see if that's ours to maintain I, I think it's not okay <laughs> they're okay our reserve responsibility to homeowners association so we'll follow up with them okay. um, also I wanted to compliment Fred and his staff that um, I had uh, been walking in some of our parks lately and taking pictures and sending in Fred about um, things that are broken, uh, that have been destroyed really by people um, that are really critical to like at Sean Falls, um, the uh, safety for people that are walking. And um, he has, uh, his team and his staff have uh, gone and repaired them um, really the next day. Um, and I know you emailed me and said that it was again the next day, then after they repaired it, they went back to look and somebody had destroyed it again. But I was just there yesterday or Sunday or something and it's okay now. So, um, you know, I, I was really disappointed to learn that uh, in all probability it's citizens in our, here that are go, walking through the parks that are really, we spent a lot of money uh, as an amenity and, uh, to our residents. And, um, and in this case, it was really a severe safety issue because of the location of where these wires and and uh, boulders were, but uh, I appreciate the response um, that Fred and his staff uh, did on it. Um, the uh, we got this letter from the um, leadership Dublin in the council in the chamber, indicating that uh, there had been a merger uh, of the Dublin leadership program, and they raised the issue that perhaps um, Amy, you may take under consideration and bring us back what your recommendation would be about Dave Sacuti. Um, and because um, he's our rep on that and you know how we want to handle that um, and that's all thank you thank you Kathy uh, I just would like for you all to remind people I'm getting a lot of questions and we've even had them on email about the timing of Emerald Parkway once again they see everything else going on so for the record would you just Remind us of when that's going to happen. 
Thank you. We're in the process of uh, finalizing the right-of-way acquisitions. We have one more to complete. There's one that's currently we have filed at the court. Um, engineering staff is continuing to work with the various utilities on the utility relocations that need to occur up on Bright Road. The um, houses that we um, that were on the property that we've purchased on Bright Road, I think they have all been uh, demoed with the exception of two that have the right to stay there um, a little bit longer. And we plan on having construction initiated yet this fall, or to award the contract to initiate construction this fall. Thank you. That's all. Thanks. Amy? I just have one thing to uh, mention to staff that um, along the lines of what Mary Lee has been doing, um, I read in the New York Times about an article or about an app. And I know we said we didn't want our own Dublin app, but this one is called Public Stuff, and it, it's the information's at publicstuff.com. And this is basically something that it's um, it connects residents with the city and enables in real time folks to snap a picture and upload it to the city. So instead of Mary Lee having to email Fred, um, you know, we decide where the different things would go. <laughs> I like to <laughs> No, she, there we go again, you know. Well, but Mary Lee knows exactly who to call, and my point is most residents don't, but they see something that's, that's out of line. Um, if they download this app, then they can communicate with the city about issues that are out there and I know it may be a double-edged sword and staff's probably going on now but I think it might be a really good communication tool and a way for us to stay informed about what's really going on because and, and it also the point um, in the article was it really gives residents a um, um, a stake in their community and mm -hmm. makes them empowered to do something instead of just throwing up their hands and say all oh, that you know somebody needs to do something but then they're able to actually communicate with us. And um, so something to, to think about, it's publicstuff.com. And, and we, I mean, we'll look at that. We also have, uh, through our um, work order system that we have, uh, City Works, we're, we're working to get it so that uh, when you call in with a request or a complaint or an issue like that, that it automatically goes to the appropriate Department division, and I don't know if, if it also provides the ability to uh, provide pictures or not, but we can follow up on that. Yeah, and, and so many of um, our residents use email and go to our website and through the contact city council. Um, so that's another way that you know the appropriate folks need to get contacted. All right, that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Um, just a couple things. Uh, I received a personal telephone call from uh, Tony Rossilli, and um, in everyone's packet, uh, there's a letter dated June 10th, 2013, to our city manager, Marcia Grigsby. Um, but he was just conveying to me personally, you know, the sentiment, you know, that he expresses within this letter. And, um, you know, obviously I thanked him, uh, you know, for the compliments. But, um, uh, you know, I, I think it, it's certainly worth mentioning. Uh, and it's very brief, and, and I, I think that, uh, you know, it, it's, uh, you know, something the, the, the public should be aware of. Uh, the Rossillis, it's signed by the chairman, Jack Rossilli, the CEO, Lou Rossilli, and the president, Tony Rossilli. And it says, on behalf of all of us at Rossilli Construction Company, Inc., we would like to thank you and the following gentlemen for their, uh, the extraordinary effort they put forth under very trying conditions. Without your help, Mirfield Village Golf Club would not have been ready for this year's memorial tournament. Thank you for going beyond what you had to do. And it na uh, specifically named some uh, of our staff members, uh, a township uh, staff member. And as we all know, there were more involved, uh, you know, in supporting uh, what was going on uh, with this particular project. And it closes with, please use us as a reference if any company questions the cooperation they can expect from the city of Dublin you guys were great. Um, so appreciated receiving that. I think that's, uh, you know, certainly a compliment to staff, you know, as I think council has expressed before, uh, you know, but I, I thought all the public should be aware of that. Um, you know, we from time to time uh, are subject to criticism. I'm not saying that it's, it's not sometimes undeserved, uh, undeserved um, uh, or deserved, I should say. 
Uh, <coughs> but um, anyway, this was, this was a nice letter to receive. Uh, and then in closing, um, uh, last Friday afternoon, I drove to Detroit for the fare excuse me, farewell reception for the Japanese Consul General, Kinonori uh, Matsuda. There were probably about 200 people in attendance, uh, the vast majority from Michigan. Uh, there were a couple of um, uh, comments, uh, <coughs> jokingly, of course, and uh, good-naturedly regarding Ohio, um, but um, from a Michigan legislator, imagine that. But anyway, um, the county executive from Oakland County was there, uh, as was uh, uh, a state legislator uh, and some other individuals that spoke. Um, I made comments, of course, on behalf of the city of Dublin and sort of representing the uh, Ohio del delegation. I have some photographs that I'll forward uh, to all of you. Um, but I um, just want to say, if it's not obvious, um, the, the Japanese Consul General and his staff uh, are very appreciative of the relationship that they have with the city of Dublin. They, they highly value the relationship and, and um, uh, of all the communities and, and connections that they have, uh, in Ohio, um, you know, I, I think it's fair to say that they value the relationship that they have with uh, the city of Dub Dublin, the greatest, and, and um, uh, at, at all levels, our staff, you know, certainly our city council uh, and the school districts and, and, and everyone. So, um, uh, Council General Matsuda will be will be missed by by all accounts. Um, you know, he is, has has um, uh, been unrivaled. Uh, you know, and the dedication that he's shown to the job, uh, you know, the, the extent of his outreach to us, to the city of Dublin, uh, as compared to other consul generals and so forth. So, um, in any event, I just wanted to pass that along. Um, and with that, we're adjourned. Thank you very much.